Hello everyone, this is Apurva. I'm a neurophysical therapist and founder of Beyond Rehab. I, in our practice at Beyond Rehab, we specialize working with people with dystonia, Parkinson's disease, functional neurological disorder, offering them comprehensive and specialized care to help them manage their needs. And it's all done from the comfort of home. As a part of my clinical background work uh, in the clinical field, I get to meet and connect with researcher experts in the field of dystonia and movement disorder all across the globe. So in, in my search and uh, in reading and learning from the experts, I got connected with Haumi. Haumi Rosette is from Barcelona. He's a world-renowned researcher, clinician, author, an artist. He works extensively with people in the field of uh, musician dystonia. He is a medical director uh, at Institute de Physiologica in Barcelona, of working primarily with performing art artists, and um, also has uh, pioneered and championed uh, rehabilitation for performing arts and uh, and work on uh, delivering holistic and proactive care for people with dystonia. It's a privilege to have uh, connected with him and have him join us today in discussing the role of neurorehabilitation in managing dystonia. Welcome, Hami. Uh, thank you. Happy to be here with you. Thank you. So we'd like to get started just with um, a quick, uh, is there anything which you'd like to add in your introduction? I know you have an extensive background in research and clinical field in the story. No, I, I think it's, it's uh, well explained. I, I perhaps only want to add that I'm not a neurologist. I'm, I'm uh, a sports medicine specialist. I'm also an uh, orthopedic surgeon. Um, and, and I learn about dystonia and I learn about neurology obviously in my career all, all physicians will learn about neurology but not as a specialty uh, so uh, during the last 20 years I, I, I must be focused on neurology and learn a lot of things that I, I didn't learn on the career because one of the most challenging um, problems in, in musicians is focal dystonia. When I started with musicians in 1991, um, in that moment, there is no way to solve musician dystonia. If, mm -hmm. if we see a musician with dystonia, what we can uh, tell him is, okay, you have this, don't worry, you, you will not die because of that, but you, your career is over because mm -hmm. we don't have any tool for you. Uh, this has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it's mostly because people like us uh, start to uh, look to this area, a specific area of, of performing arts, medicine, mm -hmm. and specialize in, in, in this field of musicians' history. So we'll learn a lot because it's, it's a very challenging um, condition. And, and at that moment, we knew almost nothing about that. And, and during these uh, 30 years, uh -huh. we have learned a, a lot without being originally an, a neurologist. Amazing. So typically, uh, like, uh, like to ask you, like, how does musician dystonia or focal dystonia present? And uh, when do they come and see you following their diagnosis? Um, there is not one unique way of um, appearing the, the, the symptoms, but normally the, the most common um, symptom is something that normally could be done easily, now begins to be difficult or impossible. For instance, a, a piano player, um, when he's playing something that yesterday could play without mm -hmm. any effort, something that it's difficult for everybody, but for this musician, it's in that moment normal because it's a high level musician. Today, it begins to be difficult. Some, some kind of tension, some kind of, of blocking, some 
involuntary movement, some finger that it's closing inside the hand. There are several different symptoms, but the most important thing is I cannot do in the same way or with the same facility that thing that I was trained to do it. Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, typically, after how long they get to come and work with you at your institute? Um, this has changed a lot because nowadays we are a well-known center all over the world. So many musicians know about us. And so it's easier for them to come here. Mm -hmm. But um, it could take, take a long run to first realize that they have focal dystonia because mm -hmm. many physicians are not able, not because they are bad physicians, it's because mm -hmm. they are not trained to that. Because when we study medicine, we don't... Um, um, they don't teach us about this because it's something so specific that it's only learned when you do the specialty of neurology. Mm -hmm. So many physicians will see this, this um, musician and will think it's a psychological problem, it's a tendon problem, many other things, but not this one. So sometimes they will need one, two, three, four, five physicians. Mm -hmm. uh, to finally have the diagnosis. And after that, they need to find a place where to have a solution because most of the people that will be able to say, yes, this is dystonia, will not offer any real uh, effective therapy. Mm -hmm. So, okay, now I have the diagnosis, but I, 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 I cannot do anything for you. So it could take three, five years mm -hmm. of, of changing from one place to another. Uh, obviously, this is changing. Sometimes we have here patients that the first symptom has appeared two weeks ago. So sometimes it's very, very speedy. But uh, it, it could take a long time. So uh, I'd like to ask you if, if there's any initial symptoms or changes which artists needs to be aware that they are experiencing it and probably it's something yeah. it needs attention from the right neurologist. Um, there is not real um, guide symptom to, to say, oh, oh, be careful because if you feel that it could be dystonia because the, the beginning... It's, it's very different from one patient to another. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, I, I, I would say, okay, if you are experiencing problems to do something that you were, were able to do some days ago, and there is no technical, uh, physical explanation for that, you should put on the table the possibility that you, you have focal dystonia because... Mm -hmm. um, this is the characteristic of, of, of focal dystonia in general. The mm -hmm. patient, it's okay. There is nothing wrong, apparently. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. but don't, it's not working in the in the in the way it should work. Mm -hmm. This is the main um, red flag. Okay, I see. Um, and then, uh, as they get started in seeking the care, like uh, any advice on how can they? Um, seek the right care or who they should look for when they are uh, connecting with the physician neurologist yeah um obviously if if we are talking about a musician the first the first option will be someone that it's working with performing artists that would that will be the best option if this is not possible or you are not a musician you have cervical dystonia or other kind of focal dystonias the the, the 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 first step is the neurologist for sure because mm -hmm. um diagnosing dystonia focal dystonia when you have expertise mm -hmm. it's quite easy mm -hmm. it's not very it's not very difficult mm -hmm. um but if you don't have expertise in that it could be almost impossible for you to say it's it's or not dystonia. If you go, go to the right place, you will have a, a diagnosis, probably mm -hmm. without many additional uh, tests, uh -huh. because dystonia 
um, has no specific test. We right. cannot do any test mm -hmm. to say, yes, this is Hispania. When we do mm -hmm. tests, it's because we are not sure mm -hmm. about the diagnosis. So if I want to say, yes, this is Hispania, but there mm -hmm. is some symptom or in the physical exploration examination, there is something that it's not matching with the diagnosis, then it's when we need to do uh, brain scans, blood uh -huh. analysis, many other things. But if you are really sure, and this is more possible if the, the person that you are uh, uh, asking uh, mm -hmm. has expertise, it will be easier, cheaper, and mm -hmm. faster. I see. And following their diagnosis, uh, how? what's the best way for them to get started um, in seeking the right care? Um, we, we must say that there are two kind of approaches mm -hmm. to the therapy, okay? or they, they are two groups of therapies that we can um, manage. Uh, the first one is the pharmacological mm -hmm. approach. Try to change the way the brain is creating the information and how this information is uh, transferred to the muscles mm -hmm. by means of medicines, by means of uh -huh. uh, drugs, by means of um, different um, medications that will change the brain or will change the mm -hmm. connection between the, 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 the nerve and the muscle. This is one, one possibility. Mm -hmm. Normally, this is, is done by a neurologist. It's mm -hmm. the kind of approach that a neurologist can offer to you. Okay. This kind of approach, it's good in the sense that if it works and mm -hmm. in some kind of of um, dystonias, focal dystonias, it works better than others. Uh -huh. um, you can have very quick changes in your symptoms. Okay. This is the, the good part mm -hmm. of taking drugs or uh, using uh, botulinum toxin or this kind of, of therapies. The problem of this part mm -hmm. is that this cannot give you 100% relief of the symptoms mm -hmm. and this probably will create secondary uh, effects mm -hmm. and this cannot cure your dystonia. Mm -hmm. If it works and you are comfortable with the therapy, you, you, you will need to continue with this therapy for mm -hmm. all your life because this is changing the symptoms, but mm -hmm. not changing the, the problem. Uh -huh. okay? The second possibility is trying to retrain, trying to um, rebuild this part of your brain that has changed mm -hmm. and it's provoking your dystonia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is done by means of neurorehabilitation, mm -hmm. a sort of different kind of approaches. There are different kinds of approaches, some of them more effective than others, but there are different ways of approaching that mm -hmm. that has the potential to go to the problem, direct, directly to the problem and to rebuild these networks of, in your brain that mm -hmm. are creating the problem, okay? Mm -hmm. This is um, fantastic because the goal is to solve the problem mm -hmm. and by means of this, these approaches, it's possible to solve completely, to um, mm -hmm. delete the problem forever. Mm -hmm. But the problem is it's, it's not so quick. You will not have clear effects the, 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 the week after starting the therapy. So you will need to, 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 to know that and to keep calm and to, and to work regularly to, to little by little mm -hmm. see these changes. Okay? okay. In our center, we do, we do not offer the first possibility. Okay. We mm -hmm. don't use drugs. Mm -hmm. Why? Because in medicine, in general, everybody wants to be at 100%. Everybody wants to recover completely, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are certain parts of the population that not being at 100%, it's more um, negative than others. Obviously, uh, if I'm uh, a physician mm -hmm. and I cannot work very well, work very well it's a problem, but I can do my, my work. Mm -hmm. okay, but 
if I'm a marathon runner and I cannot walk, mm -hmm. this is a very big problem. If I improve from 10% of my capability to 40%, for me as a physician, it, it will be great. But mm -hmm. for a runner, mm -hmm. being at 40%, when you need to be not at 100%, at 120%, mm -hmm. it's not enough. And this is why we don't use this kind of approaches because this kind of approaches will not solve the problem mm -hmm. and will not give them mm -hmm. a 100% relief of the symptoms. Mm -hmm. They improve some, sometimes a little, sometimes a little more, but never reaching uh, the, the standards of, of capability, motor capability to be mm -hmm. a, 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 a musician. Mm -hmm. This is why we have been working from the beginning exploring um, techniques that can offer us a 100% recover. I see. And um, I'd like you to ask you, how will the journey look like when they first come and how's the process for them uh, going through uh, the neuro rehabilitation? Yes. Um, we have um, two parts of the therapy. Mm -hmm. The first part of the therapy is the introduction of the therapy. It's a, a, an intensive five days um, schedule mm -hmm. when we need to um, go deeper in the problem, mm -hmm. understand which is the situation, which are the interactions, which, which muscles, which movements are affected, which, which kind of interaction this is creating, which kind of compensations. Also, we need to understand what is happening here inside, not only mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the motor area, but also in the, in the thoughts, in the feelings, in the emotions. Because although we think focal dystonia, mm -hmm. it's not provoked by a, 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 a psychiatric or psychological uh, illness, mm -hmm. uh, all kind of emotions uh, thoughts, etc., will interfere, uh, mm -hmm. can interfere with the, the therapy. So if we uh, see that the patient will need some kind of reinforce or some kind of um, treatment in this area, we will be setting these days and we will plan also to add to the neuro rehabilitation also extra mm -hmm. uh, um, work on this area. At the same time, if when we, we face the patient, we see that there are muscle imbalances, mm -hmm. uh, some part of the of the the, the 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 arm or the affected area that it's shortened that that needed or, or etc. We will also add mm -hmm. physical therapy or mm -hmm. we so we plan the therapy specifically uh, for the patient, analyzing mm -hmm. all these kind of, of needs. Then we design the 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 therapy. We build different tools that we need for the, the the therapy we teach the patient so he will be able to continue the therapy uh, alone at home mm -hmm. uh, and um, give him clear schedule about what to do how many uh, um, hours a day which will be the progression and we see the patient then every month again mm -hmm. uh, it could be by video conference uh, each month to, mm -hmm. to review the evolution, how how has changed, how, which things have improved, which goals we have reached and which not, and, and after that we decide again, and we we replan the, the therapy. I see, and then uh, gradually, when do you start seeing the changes as uh, individuals start doing practicing actively on um, the process? Yes, um, in our patients, we we try to 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 uh, 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 make them avoid, uh, avoid as much as possible the trigger of this okay. time. So um, at the very beginning, they will not know if they are improving because they they are not um, facing the, 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 the situations. If I have dystonia when I play the piano, um, I will not play the piano. We, we, this is very important. From our point of view, focal dystonia mostly um, affects 
the automatisms. Mm -hmm. And the automatisms are specific networks created for specific activities. Mm -hmm. I need to do this kind of difficult things in the piano, I create one automatism. I, I do, I practice another thing and I create another. And these are linked to the activity. So if I do the same thing in another context, not mm -hmm. on the piano, if I do exactly the same movement, but mm -hmm. not on the piano, most of our patients mm -hmm. don't have any symptoms. This is why, or this is mo mostly why, for mm -hmm. many, many, many years, musicians in Estonia had been considered a psychological or, or psychiatric disease because you go to the doctor, you can play the piano, uh -huh. the physician see you and, and don't, don't find any problem. Mm -hmm. You can do the movement on the table, but mm -hmm. you can do the, the movement on the piano. It, it's, mm -hmm. it seems crazy. Mm -hmm. And this is, and this is not because it's a psychological problem, problem. it's because the motor affected area is an automatism and automatisms are specific. So mm -hmm. rehabilitation mm -hmm. must be also specific. Mm -hmm. We also do general exercises to mm -hmm. make easier the rehabilitation, but mm -hmm. to solve the problem, you need to practice the problem. But mm -hmm. when you practice the problem, you uh, activate dystonia. So part of the, the strategy of, of the therapy we, we use it's about trying to make dystonia not appear mm -hmm. when we do the therapy and also evitate during the day those activities that will provoke dystonia. So during the first two weeks, one month, in some patients a little bit more, they will not know if they are improving because mm -hmm. they will not practice free on the activity. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so they, they should um, trust in the therapist and, and if the therapist says, okay, you are working well, this is going well, you should mm -hmm. trust in, in that because you should not try to see if it's working or not because every time mm -hmm. you, you tr uh, test if, okay, I will prove my hands on the, the piano and see if it's working, you are destroying part of the of the work you have been mm -hmm. doing so mm -hmm. but after that when you you start to to introduce um free practice mm -hmm. the patient itself will will see the the progress mm -hmm. mm, normally the progress is not um constant it's it's mm -hmm. not every day a little bit better than yesterday mm -hmm. uh, it could be in some patients, but normally it's it's with ups and downs, moments that, that you feel that, yes, this is the, the way and, and, mm -hmm. and you feel very encouraged to, to continue with the therapy. Some moments that it goes down and, and, and it seems that all the work you, you have done, it's mm -hmm. loose, that you're losing your time, that it is not the way. And, and it's very important in the connection be between the, the, the patient and the therapist to, to uh -huh. trust in the, the expertise of the therapist. So the, the, the therapist could say to you, okay, don't worry, this is normal and you, you must trust in that. Mm -hmm. because it's, the, it's the true, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a normal way these kind of things evolve. It's, it's very uncommon that you have a, a very regular um, mm -hmm. improvement and, and mm -hmm. And in fact, it's it's for me also um, logic mm -hmm. that the evolution is not regular because uh -huh. part of the therapy, uh, at least part of the therapy we, we use, uh -huh. it's about um, introducing instabilities to these networks. Networks, mm -hmm. um, mostly when we talk about um, automatisms, a very uh, a stable uh, um, networks. So uh -huh. these kind of connections mm -hmm. um, are very, very, very hard. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. If we want to change this configuration to another one, mm -hmm. it will be easier if we introduce to the therapy something that will make these connections a little bit looser. Mm -hmm. okay? 
if we are introducing as part as, as an important part of the therapy something mm -hmm. that is making the system unstable mm -hmm. it's not logic to expect a mm -hmm. very a stable evolution sometimes right. the system will run uh, uh, forward very clearly and sometimes you will feel that it's going backward it's not really that mm -hmm. it's it's unstable Mm -hmm. And the patient should also have the advice to try to analyze the evolution uh, a little bit, mm -hmm. not for the day, a mm -hmm. little bit panoramic. Okay, mm -hmm. not how I was yesterday, uh, how I was two months before. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, that's, that's better because from one day to another, changes could be zero or could mm -hmm. be up and down so you could be loose right yeah and i remember uh, the analogy which you had mentioned before it's like shaking the system right like seeing how can we get the normal movement going with the regular activities or other activities with what they're doing yes this is this is something that we have learned um from from um s s sports trainers um, in fact, uh, sometimes I, 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 I say, joking, that one good thing for us has been that I'm not a neurologist. Mm -hmm. Why I say that? <laughs> because if I, I, I was trained as a neurologist, probably my approach to dystonia um, would be Botox, would be um, drugs. And as this works... Uh -huh. probably I will not go forward and try to find other solutions. And my, mm -hmm. my scope was, would be very, 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 very little. As I don't know that, then I, I, I'm able to look for other fields. And one of the fields we have learned a lot of things that have been useful for, for the, 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 this, this neurovigilation for focal dystonia has been a, a sports trainers. Um, they they um, have used this kind of approach of checking the system by introducing uh, instability to foster um, the, the, the performance, to foster the, the performance uh, improvement, mostly in a, 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 a group of athletes that they are already very good but from that point they have a lot of difficulties to go further they have the potential mm -hmm. but it seems to be blocked at that point and they train a lot they they try to change the technique try to change the trainer without real results mm -hmm. and when they they face that situation they they show that these kind of athletes the problem was that they their automatisms uh, for 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 the the, the sport are so static, so rigid that it's very difficult. We need a lot of um, energy to change that. And this is why they need a lot of training to gain just a little bit in, in the performance. And they introduce that, that approach, introducing instabilities. Um, and with that approach, they can uh, go uh, up again with the performance and foster that and when we when we knew that we said okay that's not the same problem that we have with focal dystonia but the background is exactly the same we have a wrong, a wrong um, network in the automatism that has changed and we need to change it and we know that it's very difficult but because it's very stable and perhaps it's kind of approach will be able to easy that and mm -hmm. to force no, really well said, because um, it's also stated that dystonia is also the negative neuroplasticity, right? Like the brain and the body has learned to work in a certain way. It has adapted. And now how do we change and retrain the nervous system and the body to work in the normal capacity without uh, using the positive neuroplasticity? So uh, it, it involves a lot of exploration and it, it's different for every individual with the work they do, with the uh, demand of work and uh, activities which they do. 
and also looking into the sensory piece has been very very uh, helpful like at times using different sensory stimulus cues their performance changes their uh, movement pattern changes even in cervical dystonia so uh, i i hear you and even in my practice like the first phase is all about exploration and helping them re- uh, just see how can they uh, follow the normal movement pattern without uh, without any overactivity or excessive activity in the affected part i i'm not, I'm not completely sure if it's it's at least from our, my point of, of view of, of mm-hmm. from my point of understanding what is focal dystonia uh, i'm not sure if it's good to talk about positive or negative plasticity okay i think i think we have plasticity uh-huh. some, right. some in some moments more in some moments less uh-huh. but we we have the capability of adapting all our uh, lives, okay? Mm-hmm. From our point of view, dystonia appears when the capability to adapt, so the plasticity of that, in this case, automatism, um, is under the demands. Mm-hmm. So it could be that plasticity is less than, than needed, mm-hmm. the plasticity can be more than needed, mm-hmm. but the demands are higher and higher. So it's not only my plasticity, the problem. Mm-hmm. It's uh, which is the situation I'm in front now. Mm-hmm. So it could be a, 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 a person with normal, if mm-hmm. we could say that, normal plasticity that have dystonia, Mm-hmm. And be, be, why? Because the demands of adaptation are higher than mm-hmm. this, and mm-hmm. another person with a very low capability of adaptation, plasticity, that don't have dystonia because the demands of adaptation are also very low. So mm-hmm. it's always, and this is very interesting because when we see musicians, uh-huh. most of them, dystonia appears when something very important happens i see something very important means something that needs a lot of demands of adaptation for instance mm-hmm. i move from my teacher to a new teacher that it's a mm-hmm. very good one it's the best in the world and i want to be there and when i'm there my teacher says okay you are absolutely wrong you need to change all your technique. It's all wrong, and you need to reorganize uh, all. Or, for instance, when you have an injury and you you need to continue playing because uh, you need to to play, but the injury is creating uh, um, some interference. Or when you have your father has died, or you have very financial problems, uh, uh, etc. Something very hard. Mm-hmm. But sometimes. You see a musician that his life is normal, that there is nothing very strange there, and dystonia also appears. Why? It's just because that. Because, yes, if you are in front of a a, a very high amount of demands of of adaptation, Mm -hmm. most of the people will break. Mm -hmm. But not everyone, but most. But Mm -hmm. when you have a low degree of adaptation, something very little that you are not able to uh, uh, notice could be enough to break your automatism. Right. Yeah. It's not bad plasticity or wrong plasticity or negative plasticity in, in, in my way of uh-huh, thinking, uh-huh. but how much I can adapt uh-huh. and how big is the demand. Right. So uh, there was really like good points which you mentioned, like looking into, especially in the beginning, looking at person as a whole, seeing like not just their affected part, but what are the other changes um, which has come with their with the with the presentation of dystonia, looking into conditioning, which is also very important. It's not just training the muscles affected, but also training the body as a whole. And gradually getting started, exploring movement and seeing how 
the movement can be retrained as as you said it's a long journey needs a team effort it definitely a lot of team effort a consistency um it needs to be more fun creative in order to help individuals succeed so um, how how individuals have adapted and how have you seen uh, individuals grow through this process um obviously this is this is um different from one patient to another. Mm -hmm. um, having focal dystonia, it's a very big problem. Mm -hmm. and, and in some kinds of dystonia, for the other people, it's obvious that you have a problem. Mm -hmm. If you have a cervical dystonia and you are turning all the time your head, people will know that you have a problem. But there are, there are other kinds of dystonias that you look normal. Mm -hmm. And, and 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 then it's difficult to to explain and to make understand the people that this is important for you for mm -hmm. a musician mm -hmm. is something that could end your your career mm -hmm. so it's something very 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 important and the first step will be for sure to make the patient accept this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not knowing the diagnosis diagnosis is the first step you know mm -hmm. that you have that but now you you need to accept that you have that i see and and, and this and this could take five minutes mm -hmm. or could take all your life and if you start the therapy without being accepting that that you have dystonia uh, it will be more difficult to 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 solve mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um the second important point for us is to make the patient understand that having dystonia it's nothing good mm -hmm. but you have it it's something that we could not change now okay you have dystonia it's not good and the therapy could be a journey to recover mm -hmm. so this long way will bring you to the start point mm -hmm. to the that you don't have dystonia so so you have lost all this time of your life mm -hmm. well dystonia could be an opportunity to review different things of your way of thinking of your life of your style of life of, of your healthy habits etc et et so the journey to recover it's not just it's the main goal obviously mm -hmm. to, to get recovered but it's a journey when you get enriched, that you you change things, that you you change your mindset or not. Mm -hmm. But if you do, you are not again at the start point. You are going forward all the time, and 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 I think it's uh, it's good if it's in this way because uh -huh. it will make the therapy easier, and mm -hmm. obviously, mm -hmm. the patient will not always all, only be cured, but also had grow in mm -hmm. many other things mm -hmm. and these things these areas where the patient can grow it's obviously personal it's it's different from one one person to another and it's the the, the, the patient itself that should decide uh, which which things um can be improved worked changed mm -hmm. uh, during the therapy but it's a very good opportunity because it's a very big stop in your life it's a very challenging thing uh -huh. uh, and, and, and and it's an opportunity so for us the the the, the most important thing is okay first accept you have mm -hmm. that um it's not about explaining things very well mm -hmm. it's it's so to okay yes i have it uh, it's not it's not something i i, I did wrong it's not um my mistake it's something that happens it, it's it's not very uh, uh, common but it's not something absolutely uh, strange i'm not the first person mm -hmm. in the world that has had that except that this is the mm -hmm. situation except that there are ways to solve it mm -hmm. uh, ways that will need your participation as our therapists will not cure you we will guide you mm -hmm. we will help you to mm -hmm. follow the path but you will need to work not only walk the path, but mm -hmm. also contribute 
to 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 the process. So it's not it's it's easier to take a drug. It's easy to, uh -huh. to get a shot of of botulinum toxin because mm -hmm. you go there, you put your arm there, and they shot you. And it's all all the responsibility for the therapist. Now uh -huh. the responsibility it's it's also uh, um, mm -hmm. for the therapist, but mostly for the patient. So you you should to, you should take the the wheel of the car uh -huh. and and drive and and we will give you maps and we will give you uh, advices we will change some parts of of the, of the car to to make it easier but you you should drive and 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 this is for us the most important things to to keep in mind when when we start the therapy and we reinforce it mm -hmm. from time to time because it's it's very for us it's very important no, I, I agree. Like the active coping and active engagement is the way to start. And once they are taking the control of the condition and that's when the change happens because it it needs to be driven by the individual and the team is there to support them, facilitate the change uh, and guide them. But it has like the individual is the a key person in bringing the change. Mm -hmm. So lastly, I'll just like to ask you, like, you know, there's a lot of hope and a recovery is possible it's um as you as we have seen in our practice and work um, is there any uh, message any uh, any feedback any points which you like to share with the community um, who are in, uh, like in, especially the individuals who are looking to get started with therapy who are exploring in more active engagement uh, neuro rehabilitation piece Yes, um, I think there is a very important uh, aspect that should be mentioned that actually there are many places where you could go to have a therapy to mm -hmm. be treated. Okay, not perhaps not thousands, but perhaps hundreds in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, when we started in 1991, that, that was not uh, there, there was any place. Okay. Uh, to, uh, actually, there are a lot of places. Um, most of these places, for me, are not good places to go. How you can identify which is a good place and which is not a good place? Um, some of these places, some of, of these therapists that offer therapy are patients that have had, has had dystonia before. They accurate and they think from their unique expertise that they have understood the way to solve it. So they are um, using the unique expertise for every body. Centers like we do, mm -hmm. we make a therapy not from one single patient that has work well that mm -hmm. has been cured and copy that we try to take general ideas about each specific case and with this information we can adapt therapy for for, uh, for everyone so mm -hmm. i think this this is the, the most important advice when you are looking for help if what it's offering to you it's my expertise because I had cured myself about dystonia and I will help you using my tools. This could work. Yes, it could work. But I think it's much better if we have a more general approach based in not one single case mm -hmm. that has been, uh, uh, su has been successful, but many different cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for sure, for me, if you want to be cured, you will you need to 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 go to neuro rehabilitation programs doesn't matter there are different approaches uh -huh. um, why there are different approaches there are different approaches because we don't know 100 percent what really happens here mm -hmm. because this is very complex there are many interactions i can change my motor programs by means of thoughts mm -hmm. so if i'm doing a mental uh, emotional approach, I can change my movements, yes, 
but probably it's better to go directly to the movements, not all this pathway. But it is possible. So you can find different ways to um, solve this tonia. Try to find which one is closer to you way of understanding what is happening in your body. Mm -hmm. Because there are different approaches, but um, I'm sure that focal dystonia could not be cured without retraining the movements, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the specific movements. I cannot solve piano dystonia without retraining on the piano. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing yoga, mm -hmm. I can feel better, more calm, etc. But my, my dystonia will be the same. Mm -hmm. If I want to solve my dystonia, I would need to do a specific rehabilitation for that. And mm -hmm. this is what, what you need to look for. Right. Yeah, I agree. It needs to be targeted. It needs to be very specific uh, type of training. So, yes, and as much um, expertise the therapist has in that specific dystonia, if you are a musician and you go to a neurorehabilitation center that never has seen a musician, they could help you, yes, but better if you go to a place that had been working with musicians, because mm -hmm. in general it's the same, but there are some specific uh, uh, things that should be addressed in a different way if you have expertise in that. So if I, I, I have treated 300 patients with cervical dystonia and one musician, if, and you are a musician, perhaps you, you, you should go to another place uh, rather than going to a place that they work very well with, with focal dystonia, but with cervical dystonia only. Right. Now there, this... are, there are many places that have expertise in all, okay? Mm -hmm. But mostly, mm -hmm. Uh, most of the people, as, as we are, we, we treat also cervical dystonias, we, we treat all other kind of focal dystonias, but our main scope, our, our main field is musicians. So we are very good on that. And, mm -hmm. and, and if you are a musician, it's, it, it's this one of the places you should go. Mm -hmm. No, um, I, I agree. And um, really like, and this is like once, the individual is ready for the change and they're looking to get started doing their own uh, research and seeing where they want to go asking the right question will be the first step and then this will get them started so uh, i um i uh, value your conversation and the way you guided us like right from helping us understand like how the dystonia presentation of, of presence all the way to how the recovery works and uh, as we have seen as a clinician, there's a lot of hope in recovery. So definitely anyone out there looking to take a step and get started, please do so. Recovery is possible. It's just a matter of uh, getting started, working with the right team, uh, being consistent and following the process. It's it's a lot of effort, but there is a light at the end. So you'll, you'll be able to get through it. And you'll, as uh, Dr. Hami said, that you'll be able to discover yourself. You'll be able to discover your strengths and build a new you. And this will bring new opportunities for you to advance and uh, live more happily and fulfilled. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, joining us today. It was really, really a valuable conversation. There was a lot of learning points for all of us from the clinical uh, background and also for the community. And uh, and it, it just makes me um, blow away like with all the research and your the way you, uh, way you work and way you have contributed to this field. Uh, so really a uh, big thank you for this. And thank you so much for your time and joining us today. It has been a pleasure to be here with you and I'm happy to, to see that you think it's it's valuable our 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 talk yeah thank you